folks, Zach Elliott, and feel free to argue. And I uh, hope you're all doing okay. And I uh, was watching some stuff um, on Democracy Now! lately and putting a few things together and want to talk to you about it. Um, I don't know if uh, people remember about uh, when I was talking about an article that I saw uh, by Naomi Klein talking about uh, the advances sort of in the surveillance, surveillance state in China prior to the Beijing Olympics. And uh, I found this fascinating because I think, uh, I'm not sure of the city, but I thought it was Shenzhen, but uh, where they basically had a surveillance system at that point that could monitor pretty much all the citizens of the town from the second they left their uh, houses or apartments more likely in the morning until the second they got home at night. Everything they did during the day, everywhere they went, no matter where they went, you go to the bathroom, you go to a restaurant, you go to you know, an arcade uh, parlor, wherever you want to go, it's, it's, you're going to be monitored. Um, and the pervasiveness was amazing. I mean, even to the extent of like they, they see you, you know, answer a, set, uh, a phone call, they can immediately, you know, push a few buttons, tap into that phone call, hear what you're saying, know who you're talking to. So, <laughs> and, and one of the things that Naomi Klein points out in her article is that it was all American companies who were doing this, but they were testing out this technology in China where, of course, they, they don't have any you know, niceties about uh, you know, privacy rights or anything like that, that they have to be concerned about. Um, so the technology is unfettered. Uh, and so I was thinking, like, how, is that, how are they going to get that back here? <laughs> how are they going to get that to the United States? Um, I thought, you know, that's going to be difficult because, uh, you know, we're, we're not going to stand for that, that sort of thing. But... I don't know. I think more and more, I think we're, we're just going to, we're going to let it happen because of the way we use technology and the fact that we don't think about the other ways in which information that we give can be used. Um, and there were a couple of things that really, you know, brought that to, to, to home, you know, brought that home to me recently. There was a uh, column that, uh, uh, Amy Goodman uh, wrote recently, which I will link to in the sidebar. She was talking about the case of Elliot Madison, who was a young writer and anarchist who um, was with the protests at the G20 recently in, uh, in Pittsburgh. And uh, he was arrested there, and then after he, he was let go, he was also, he was then um, had his apartment where, that he had with a couple of other people he, it was raided. He and his, his uh, the other people there were kept in handcuffs for four hours. Um, and uh, the police then carted a whole bunch of stuff away, including uh, a curious George doll and uh, a handcrafted uh, uh, Afghan that a relative had, had uh, done. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so what, what was his horrible offense uh, that got him in so much trouble with the law? Well, uh, he was tweeting about um, locations, uh, police locations at the G20 and specifically about where they were giving orders to disperse, which, I mean, arguably is actually helping the police with their job, you know, warning people away from areas where police have given orders to disperse. Um, but all that aside, I mean, I think, think of the dangers of him getting arrested. And I think he has three, three or four charges against him for basically using um, a public service to distribute public information. I mean, there's no way that this is a secret when there's a, a cop with a bullhorn who's shouting this information, you know. He's giving an order to disperse, you know, he's not whispering it, he's not typing it. He's got a bullhorn, he's giving an order to disperse. So that's public information. I think it's about as public as you can get if you're shouting it through a bullhorn. And yet this person be, is being, you know, ha having his life turned upside down and, uh, you know, having all these problems just for disseminating public information through a public network. So... 
And that's one thing to think about really seriously. I need a drink. Second thing, and I will also post a link to this in the sidebar, was um, they had uh, on today's show a guy called Noah Shockman there from Wired Magazine talking about how um, <laughs> the CIA's investment unit, um, which is called InQtel, um, has recently invested in uh, visible technologies. Now, as he put it, uh, the uh, CIA <laughs> and their investment group uh, invest in, in technologies that they would like to see developed. So, what would they like to see developed in the good old CIA that we love and trust so much? Um, visible technologies um, works with what a, a lot of people call open source intel. And open source intel means basically combing through social networking sites to get information. Um, in the case of visible technology, they talk about going through blogs, Flickr, YouTube, uh, Twitter, and even Amazon. You know, people who um, post like book reviews or reviews actually of anything on, on Amazon are also kind of getting checked. So what are they looking for? Well, they're looking to identify leaders on the internet in the blogosphere, as it's often called. Um, and they're trying to find out what those leaders and the people who are kind of flocking around them are saying. So, <laughs> here's your downside of popularity, folks. You know, the, the more popular you are, the more times, you know, people check out your reviews on Amazon, the more that, you know, people um, watch your videos, the more that... Uh, uh, people subscribe to your Twitter feed, the more likely you are going to be now to get CIA attention. You know, even though, technically speaking, they're not supposed to spy on people in the United States. But, well, good thing they haven't done any of that. <laughs> um, and, you know, this is a perfect example of, you know, how the lines are getting so incredibly blurry. And because the, the law, I think, is like way, 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 way behind the technology at this point. And there's, there's not, no kind of incentive at this point to rein this in because, you know, you have your climate of fear in the country and a feeling that it's okay to invade everybody's privacy in the name of, like, national security. So, just some stuff for, for people to be aware of in terms of thinking about, like, you know, my previous example and, like, what I was talking about right at the very beginning, um, the difference between the U.S. and China and how we're just going to kind of, you know... It, it's like a vampire. We're inviting it into our house just by the way we use these technologies and the fact that we're not kind of upfront being rigorous about saying, you know, hey, you know, and we, the, the, we want <laughs> there to be limits on like, you know, how this is going to be used by other sources. But anyway, you can certainly feel free to argue. I'd love you to do it. I mean, I'd I'm very interested in what people have to say on this subject. So please leave me a comment or better yet, a response video. Take care, people.